Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be implementing a quota, which means we're going to have a country, a small country involved in international trade that's going to implement a quota on a good. And we're going to be graphing that, trying to examine that graph, and fully understanding that graph, okay? So let's get to the graph. This graph, first of all, is the domestic wheat market. It is the market in that country and in that country alone. That's the first thing. This is a country's graph, okay? There is a world market out there, and I want you to think that world market maybe is being drawn to the left of this graph, okay? So I have a supply world and demand world. Hey, we can think of doing a horizontal alignment, so supply world and demand world are intersecting, like say right here, and we can bring that price world right over, the horizontal axis are very different though, right? Over here, we might be talking about millions or billions of say bushels of wheat. Over here, maybe we're only talking about thousands or hundreds of thousands of bushels of wheat, okay? Because this is a single country. Yes, there is a world market and the world market is where price world is being set, okay? And what we have is a situation that this country is a net importer. And the reason they're a net importer is their price world is below price autarky. Let's talk a little bit about that price autarky. That price autarky is where supply domestic and de demand domestic intersect. What we're saying with this term price autarky is this is the price that would prevail if they were not involved in trade at all. I do not want you to think that price autarky is synonymous with price domestic. Price domestic is whatever price prevails in the domestic economy, and that might not be price autarky. Price autarky is only going to prevail if they're not involved in trade. Put it this way, if they were involved in free trade, right, no restrictions at all, price world would prevail in their country, and that means price world would also be price domestic, okay? In fact, let's do that right from the beginning. Let's talk about price world being price domestic, meaning no intervention, no quota at the beginning, and see what our results is. Now, one more thing before I actually start dividing or uh, breaking this graph up, break or breaking it down, however you want to say it, is, hey, price world, we also label as supply world, getting back to the fact that this is a small country. The idea being is it's a fairly insignificant part of world trade. Now, trade is significant to this country, don't get me wrong, but they are an insignificant part of world trade, i.e., the world can easily supply everything that they want to consume without really any um, price impacts on the world price. So that's why we call this supply world. Okay, now let's get to breaking down the graph, right? So if they're involved in free trade, here's what we're going to have. Price world's going to prevail. It would be price domestic also. And we'd say, okay, at that price, I hit the supply domestic right there. So I'm going to label this as quantity supply domestically. This is how much that's going to be produced domestically, again, if we go with free trade. And at that price, and since this is supply world, we're going to have quantity demanded out here, and that demand is going to get satisfied, okay? How is it going to get satisfied? Well, this amount is going to come from domestic producers, okay, at least conceptually, and this amount is coming from international markets. So this distance right here, I'm going to mark it down here, this horizontal distance is going to be the amount of imports if they're engaged in free trade. But then they decide, hey, Let's implement a quota. Let's limit the amount of imports, probably for one of two major reasons. One, their current account maybe is too big in deficit, or two, they just want to help out domestic producers, okay? So they decide to implement a quota. Now, here's the thing. This is how much uh, the imports are right now. If they set their quota, their amount of imports they're going to allow in at, say, this amount, larger than the current amount of imports, we would say that was a non-binding quota. It would have no impact on the market whatsoever. They would not import this amount. They would only import that amount. But, of course, we're going to do a binding quota, just like the same reason we do binding ceilings and binding floors when we do price controls. So we're going to do a binding quota, so that means their quota is going to be less. Now, we can make the quota any amount. We can make it that amount, that amount, that amount, any of these amounts, right? So let's just right there, okay? That's going to be our quota amount, the amount of imports we're going to let in. That's what a quota is, the amount of imports we're going to let in, which gives us a new curve on our graph supply total okay so what does this mean well this at this particular price is how much would be supplied by domestic producers 
this amount would be supplied by international producers. And if that price went up, say to right here, that's how much would be supplied domestically, how much would be supplied by international producers. So basically what we've done is we've shifted that supply curve to the right at all price points by the amount of the quota. Let me say that again. We've shifted the supply curve to the right at all price points by the amount of the quota. Now again, we're not calling this supply domestic because we didn't really shift supply domestic. We just added on that international piece. So supply total has the domestic production and the amount that's coming from our international trading partners. So what would happen when they do this, okay? Well, when they do this, supply total now equals D uh, demand domestic right here, or I should say intersects demand domestic right there. What would happen is that price would start to go up because at price world, we would have quantity supplied in total, quantity demanded in total, we would get a shortage, and hey, shortages put upward pressure on prices. That price domestic, the price world wouldn't change, the price domestically would start to go up, and as that price world domestic started to go up, hey, domestic producers would start to produce more, we'd still get that same amount of imports. So as we move on this, we would be moving on this curve. Quantity demanded would decrease as that price goes up, and that would continue to happen, getting us more domestic production, getting us to move on this curve too, and the quantity demanded to decrease until we got to that point. Let's bring it over. And that is what we're going to call price domestic. This is the price that's going to prevail domestically after the quota is impact uh, um, um, put into place okay so let's go ahead and put some letters on this graph right a b c d and it's kind of how we want to do this right here i'm going to go ahead and break this up a little bit it's going to be a little bit messy uh e f g and h okay Ooh, and one more i and we're going to do a welfare analysis on this. But before we do, we got to get something straight, something very important about the quota versus the tariff. Okay, when we do quotas, we're generally going to assume the following. It doesn't always work this way. We're going to assume the following. We're going to say that the domestic country is going to give the quota licenses away. Now, what I like to tell students from a conceptual standpoint is think of a, a, a quota license as being like a sticker. Hey, here's a license, and you can actually rip it off. And that sticker you can put on the good. And we're going to give those to the foreign producers. Here you guys go. Now, here's the deal. We're only going to allow wheat in bushels of wheat in that have that sticker on them okay so we're going to issue a number of licenses equal to our quota right issue those we're going to give them we're not going to sell them is going to be our assumption okay it's one of the reasons we're doing the quota we're doing it to help our current account or our domestic producers but we're trying to cause as little friction with our trading partners as possible so we're not going to charge them for this license okay so we're just going to give that quota license away to them and that's going to come into play when we do our welfare analysis which we are ready to do so let's start with the change in domestic consumer surplus in free trade the domestic consumer was getting a lot they were getting this entire triangle this is their mpb this is the price that was prevailing and they were able to buy stuff all the way to here and so the distance between this curve and this curve those verticals would be a b c d e f g h now with the quota coming into play that price domestic has gone up so the price consumer has gone up consumers only getting a b and c they're losing d e f g and h okay now a lot of times you might see this f being you know they might use f both ways in fact i'm going to do that just because you know limit the amount of letters so let me kind of rewrite that real quick so e f f G and H. So the consumer is losing D, losing E, losing F, and losing G, right? They're losing this entire area uh, from their surplus. So consumers basically always hurt by these trade restrictions, right? Now, the change in producer surplus, and what we're talking about is the domestic producer. Just like we we're talking about the domestic consumer, we're talking about the domestic producer right here. Now, what was the producer getting before? Well, price world prevailed, that was their PP. This was their marginal private cost curve, right? And so they were just getting H before the tariff. But then that price went up, and when that price producer went up, their price domestic went up, 
guess what? They're now getting, here's the new price that's prevailing. That's why they produced more. This is still their MPC. So this is still my MPC, the new price that's prevailing. They're getting H and D, they're gaining D. How about the government revenue? Well, just like I said before, we're gonna assume that this country is giving away the licenses, okay? And if they gave away the licenses, the government's getting no revenue whatsoever, which means the change in social surplus domestically, just talking about domestically, is going to be, D went from consumer to producer, so that's a wash, but consumer lost E, F, and G, and nobody's picking it up domestically, so domestically, we're gonna lose E, F, both of those Fs right there, and G. Now, I do want you to understand this F is getting picked up by somebody, okay? Just not the domestic government. What we call this is quota revenue, and since we've got the domestic government giving these licenses away, that quota revenue is gonna get picked up by our foreign producers. Remember, one of the reasons we did the quota instead of the tariff is we were trying to do something, again, maybe to help our current account, maybe to help our domestic producers, but we wanted to alienate our trading partners the least. And so in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and let them get what's called the quota revenue. So that F portion, remember, those foreign producers are getting a higher price themselves and they don't have to pay that money to anybody. They were given the licenses. So that area F right there, because that's the amount of imports and that's the amount the price went up for those foreign producers. That's the amount of imports. That's the amount of price that went up. Why is that the amount of imports? Because you can see that's the quota right there. That's the quota, which yes, we said we set the quota there. But remember that allowed that much more to come in. When that price prevailed, that amount came in. That's our imports. That's how much the price went up. This F is going to those foreign producers. We call that quota revenue. And that's a big difference between the quota and the tariff. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.